Over the skies of Colorado, on the 12th of May 2021, these two aircraft were on approach to Centennial Airport in Englewood, Colorado. For the crews of both aircraft, this day was about to turn into disaster as they became destined to meet mid-air. The result? Not what I was expecting, and you're not going to want to miss this one. It was a bright morning throughout the state of Colorado on the 12th of May 2021. Two separate crew prepared for their flights to Centennial Airport. The first flight, already located at Centennial Airport, was a Cirrus SR-22 aircraft, which was scheduled for a local flight with one passenger on board. The other aircraft was a Fairchild Swearing Gen SA-226 Metro, also known as a Metroliner. This was a chartered cargo flight which was due to position to Centennial. For the Cirrus aircraft, at approximately 0800 local mountain time, the pilot and passenger arrived at the aircraft. The pilot was 59 years old with a private pilot's license and was going to be operating single pilot. The aircraft, a Cirrus SR-22, was manufactured in 2016. It was able to carry four people and for today's flight, only two people would be on board. After the pilot had carried out his initial and walk-around checks, they checked in with air traffic control and requested start. Not long after, they were cleared to taxi to the holding point. Meanwhile, the pilot of the Metroliner arrived at Salida Airport and started to prepare for his short hop from Salida Airport to Centennial Airport. The aircraft was ready to go and after a final check of the weather and flight plan, the pilot carried out a walk-around of the aircraft before entering the flight deck. At this time, the Cirrus SR-22 had reached the taxi holding point at Centennial Airport and had just completed his pre-takeoff checks. The weather was looking great for their VFR flight, with a slack wind, visibility over 10 miles and only few clouds at 8,000 feet. With a final check that the passenger was happy to depart, the pilot contacted air traffic control and informed them that they were ready for departure. Air traffic control informed them that they were cleared for takeoff. The pilot entered the runway and once aligned with the centerline, set takeoff power. Not long after the takeoff roll began, at 0921 Mountain Daylight Time, they took off for their local flight around Colorado. With the Cirrus aircraft airborne, at Salida Airport, the pilot of the Metroliner had just completed his initial and pre-start checks and was ready for engine start. The pilot of the Metroliner was 50 years old. He had an airline transport pilot's license with a class one medical certificate. He had 11,184 total flying hours with 2,656 on type. 10,373 of those hours were as pilot in command. The weather at Salida was lovely. There was a light four knot wind from the south. Visibility was at 10 miles the clouds were few at 6,000 feet with a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. The flight from Salida to Englewood was due to take around 25 minutes to complete. With the pilot happy, he started engines and requested taxi. The aircraft, an SA-226 Metro, operated by Key Lime Air, was manufactured in 1978. It had flown a total of 29,525 hours with its last inspection on the 9th of March 2021, just two months previous, with it having a valid certificate of airworthiness. They taxied to the taxi holding point before the pilot carried out his pre-takeoff checks. He was confident everything was in order and let air traffic control know that he was ready for departure. They cleared him for takeoff, he taxied onto the runway and lined the aircraft up with the centerline. He then set takeoff power and started to roll down the runway. At 0956, the Key Lime Air Metroliner took off en route to Englewood, Colorado. In the climb, the pilot cleaned up the aircraft and continued to climb to 23,000 feet. Once reaching cruising altitude, the flight continued as normal for the next 15 to 20 minutes. With the time now 10.15 local, the Metroliner was in its descent to Centennial Airport and the Cirrus SR-22 was heading back to land at the same airport. 
the weather was still clear with both aircraft looking to carry out visual straight-in approaches. The pilots of the Metroliner got in touch with air traffic control at Centennial Airport and informed them that he was looking to carry out a visual approach. He was given a heading of 090 to fly until he was visual of the airfield. He continued on this heading before informing air traffic control he was visual of the field. He was then given clearance to continue, expecting to land on runway 17 left. He was then informed to contact the tower. He got in touch with local controller 1 in the tower, who cleared him for a straight in landing to runway 17 left. Meanwhile, the Cirrus was flying at approximately 6,900 feet on the QNH. The QNH is a pressure setting which will give the pilots an altimeter that indicates their height above sea level. So in this case, with the airfield elevation at 5,884 feet, this means they were roughly 1,000 feet above the ground. As they were approaching Centennial Airport, they requested a visual straighten approach. They were given clearance to join downwind for a right-hand pattern to runway 17 right and handed over to the local controller 2 in the tower. It's worth noting at this point, Centennial Airport was operating both parallel runways, 17 left and 17 right, for simultaneous operations. The Metroliner and Cirrus were now on different tower frequencies, with Local Controller 1 coordinating operations for 17 left and Local Controller 2 controlling runway 17 right. At 10.22, the Metroliner was 5.5 nautical miles from the threshold of runway 17 left, whilst the Cirrus was currently on the downwind leg for runway 17 right. The pilot in the Metroliner was aligned with the extended centre line for runway 17 left. He now started to slow and configure the aircraft for landing. The flaps were set in their landing configuration, the props were set to a high RPM and the gear down. He was on a slow descent towards the runway. The Cirrus was flying at 125 knots with the flaps up and was just approaching the end of the downwind leg. He turned right onto the base leg with the speed still increasing, with him now at 148 knots. He was contacted by air traffic control to advise him that there was traffic on approach for runway 17 left. The controller for the Metroliner did not advise him of traffic and as they were on different frequencies, they could not hear each other's communications. In the Cirrus, he now selected flaps to 50%, with the speed reducing to 140 knots, and started to turn towards runway 17 right. During the turn, the Cirrus and Metroliner were at similar altitudes. As the Cirrus was about halfway through the turn, the distance between the Metroliner and Cirrus was quickly reducing, before at 10.23, with both aircraft approximately 800 feet above the ground, the two aircraft collided. The Cirrus struck the center rear of the Metroliner, causing massive damage, with the Cirrus suffering damage to the tail and control surfaces. Instantly, it became clear to the pilot of the Cirrus that the aircraft was uncontrollable. He tried to keep the aircraft under control, but it was falling out of the sky. Luckily for the pilot and passenger of the Cirrus, it was equipped with a Cirrus airframe parachute system, or CAPS. The pilots deployed the parachute and the aircraft started to float towards the ground. There was a different story in the Metroliner. The pilot not fully knowing the extent of the damage caused to his aircraft, he immediately reported an emergency. The aircraft was acting erratically with the right engine starting to show signs of a malfunction. The pilot was fighting to keep the aircraft airborne and decided to maintain course and land on the runway available in front of him. Just a minute or so after the collision, the Metroliner landed safely on runway 17 left. Once the pilot shut the aircraft down, he was able to leave the flight deck and see the extent of the damage firsthand. It was a miracle that the aircraft remained intact and controllable enough for the pilot to make a safe landing. For the pilot and passenger of the Cirrus, their aircraft came to a rest 
around three nautical miles north of the airfield, with both people escaping the aircraft with no injuries. When the cause of this incident was investigated, it was discovered that the Cirrus was flying a much faster speed than was recommended for its approach. According to the pilot's operating handbook and FAA-approved airplane flight manual, the recommended approach speed for the Cirrus was 90 to 95 knots with the flaps up and 85 to 90 knots with 50% flaps. The Cirrus in this instance was flying at 140 knots when the collision occurred. The reason why this is important is because the extra speed increased the turning circle of the aircraft. If the Cirrus was flying at the recommended speeds, the turning circle would have more likely kept them within the extended center line for runway 17 right. With the speed it was flying, the turning circle was increased, causing them to fly through the center line of 17 right and to intercept the extended center line for 17 left. Where in this case, unfortunately, the Metroliner was there. In addition to this, the pilot of the Metroliner was not made aware of any traffic approaching runway 17 right. It is believed that if he was made aware, he could have taken the appropriate action to avoid the collision. When I first started researching this incident, I was surprised to hear the positive outcome for what I was sure was going to be a disaster. The fact that the Metroliner was able to continue flying with the rear of the fuselage heavily damaged and the ability for the Cirrus to deploy a parachute was amazing. As with many air crash investigations, the incident or accident is caused by a variety of different things. In this case, not just the excessive speed of the Cirrus or the failure to maintain the final approach course, but also the lack of traffic advisories for the Metroliner and also the fact that both aircraft were on separate tower frequencies, which meant that they were unaware of the operations around them. It's amazing that there were no injuries and that many lessons can be learned from this incident. Before I go, if you enjoyed the video, please do click the like button. And if you're not subscribed already, please click that button also. It really helps me out and will allow this channel to continue producing videos for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one.